Hey everyone, welcome back to Jay is for Justice. My name is Jay. I am your host. I've been wanting to do a live and cover all of the Koberger documents. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven now that I haven't covered or updated. I know I'm sure other channels that you guys watch have done the updates, but to complete my library of this case, I'm definitely going to want to go over these. So I want to start with the most recent and I went to go do this video and I'm like, holy crap, we have one filed just today. And this is an order setting a hearing for February the 28th. And it's going to be on Judge Judge's YouTube channel. So this says, based on the defendant's motion to allow certain experts and investigators protected access to view IgG material, defendant's motion requesting clarification of the sealed order for disclosure of IgG information and protection order, and the state's request for scheduling order, the court orders the following. A hearing on the above motions is set for February the 28th, 2024 at 1 p.m. Pacific time. This hearing will be open to the public and will be live streamed on the court's YouTube channel. As to scheduling, counsel shall be pre prepared to address scheduling, both a briefing schedule and oral argument, on defendant's motion for change of venue, a discovery cutoff deadline, expert disclosure deadlines, deadlines for filing any pretrial motions, such as motions to suppress or motions in lim limine, and dates for a trial. Dated this 11th day of February 2024. Judge was working on a Sunday, I guess. Signing docs on a Sunday. So we have, a, just to recap on that one, we have a hearing on the motions for Brian is wanting clarification on this IgG release. And then the state wants some scheduling orders. In other words, they want to keep the process moving, it seems like, which is good. So now we're going to go to the other ones that we lost. So we will be streaming that hearing when it is aired. So if you want to join here, join into our chat. More than welcome. We would love to have you. So the first one that I haven't covered yet is the Microsoft search warrant. So I'm just going to scroll through these really quick and just kind of go over them. Um, Microsoft. This matter became this matter came before the court on January 3rd, 2024, on the state's motion to seal or redact. The hearing was held via Zoom. Ashley Jennings appeared on behalf of the state and Taylor appeared on behalf of Mr. Koberger. So this Microsoft warrant, they had a, an, a hearing on Zoom that nobody else was on. The court reviewed the records, considered the arguments presented, which we don't know what the arguments were, weighed the interests in privacy and announced its finding of fact on record. Therefore, pursuant to ICR 32 I to A and E, the court finds it necessary to seal in part and redact the record related to the search warrant for the following reasons. We've seen this written in the other orders. The documents contain highly intimate facts or statements, the publication of which would be highly objectionable to a reasonable person and is necessary to preserve the right to a fair trial. Now let's go down. So here we have them sealing three different warrants. We have Microsoft, Meta, and TikTok. Let's keep going. This goes back to 11-17-2023. The 17th of November, 2023. Let's keep going. December 1st, 2023. 8 25 20, There's... Okay, so it says here... On 7-24-2023, I obtained a search warrant for Microsoft OneDrive. The warrant was served on 7-25-2023 by LE Portal, leportalmicrosoft.com. On 8-23-2023, 
Corporal Payne received an email from Microsoft stating the data was available for download. Corporal Payne download, downloaded the data and provided it to me. An inventory was prepared for all the items received and it was placed into evidence at Moscow Police Department. An IMEI of one drive res ID. What is a OneDrive res ID? And as you can see here, it says that it is redacted blank and any of the following account information blank, 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 blank. But there's four bullet points. Does that mean anything? Yes, because everything there must have something written after it. So there's four empty ones. There's IMEI and one drive res ID and then another blank bullet point. And it says account information, username, primary email address, secondary email addresses, connected apps and sites and account activity from January 1st, 2022 to December 30th, 2022. So for the whole year, user devices, information, device, make, model, international, mobile, equipment, identifier, IMEI, international mobile equipment identifier. Let that name sink in. Mobile equipment identifier. Let that name sink in. M-E-I-D. We, we rattle off this MEID and IM, IMEI like it's nothing, but mobile equipment identifier. I know it's like a serial number, but come on. Is it really? Of all associated devices linked to the Microsoft Corporation accounts of the target device. Evidence of user attribution, accounts, email accounts, passwords, pin codes, account names, usernames, screen names, etc. Calendars, contacts, finances, emails. IP addresses, photos. Okay, so that answers my question. Photos stored in the OneDrive. The OneDrive is like my iCloud. Location history. All location data, whether derived from global positioning system data, cell, site, tower, triangulation, precision measurement, Blah, blah, blah. Microsoft Store. So is this a Microsoft phone? Is this a Microsoft computer? It sounds like we're talking about a Microsoft phone. Search history. So it's something Microsoft. And I, if I'm missing something that's blatantly obvious, maybe I am. But none of this is ringing a bell for me. I don't remember reading through this at any other time. So I'm just talking through it with you guys. Let me know in the comments, though, for sure, when you watch this, if you know what this means, because there's the four bullet points that are empty, and then there's IMEI and one drive res ID, and then another empty bullet point. So what exactly are they redacting out of there? What is Microsoft OneDrive? It is the Microsoft cloud service that connects you to all your files. Okay. So whoever had a Microsoft OneDrive, it looks like they got everything on it, to put it plain and simple. Um, so the next one is going to be, this is what they're having the hearing for. To allow certain experts and investigators protected access to view IgG materials. Regarding the expansion of the protection order to include Dr. Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Stephen Mercer. Regarding the expansion of the protection order to include Dr. Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Stephen Mercer, the state does, does not object. Regarding the expansion of the protection order to include unnamed criminal investigators, unfettered access to the IgG materials, the state objects. At a minimum, individuals who will have access to any of the IgG materials should be named. Further defense, <clears throat> excuse me, has failed to make an adequate showing as to why such individuals need the information. So basically, they're saying they want unnamed people to look at this genetic genealogy 
trees and stuff. And the state's saying, we need to know who it is. Like, you're not just going to throw it out there to anybody. And this is the state's response to what the defense had filed. The motion requesting clarification, which they're having the hearing on because Koberger always needs more clarification. The defense experts or investigators should not be allowed to use the protected materials to identify individuals or witness to contact without prior authorization from the court and after showing why such contact is necessary for the preparation of the defense. This would not prohibit the defense from contacting potential witnesses learned through sources outside of the protected information. The state respectfully submits that the appropriate course of action would be for the court to amend sealed order for disclosure of IgG and protection order to allow Leah Larkin, Bicca Barlow, and Stephen Mercer access to the IgG materials. The criminal investigators seeking access to the information should be named in the order, and those investigators should only be allowed access to the November 28, 2023 letter provided to the defense. The criminal investigators seeking access should only be allowed access to the November 28th, 2023 letter provided to the defense. So on November 28th, 2023, the defense provided or the state provided the defense with a letter regarding IgG materials that they think should be just given out to the invest to these specialists. Weird. Why can't they just see the evidence? Why does it have to be a letter? Confused. So um, that was submitted on the 9th by Ashley Jennings, the senior deputy prosecuting attorney. She was the one on the Zoom the other day. So then moving on, we have Brian Koberger coming forward. They're going to talk about this on the 20th as well. The motion to change venue. Or this is the state, rather. They objected to this change of venue. Okay, so they're going to talk about the change of venue and then the state's requesting the scheduling order, which we spoke about in the very first document. So this is kind of getting us through these quick because the state wants to talk about when we're going to have these deadlines. They want to get this moving. This is Brian coming forward. Previously, we're kind of going backwards. We are going backwards. This is Brian coming forward with the motion requesting clarification. And this one is an order denying defendants motion to reconsider and motion for permissive appeal. So we heard that the judge denied that this is the order from the judge denying that. And this is where Brian is asking for experts and investigators and not naming them. And the state is arguing, saying that you need to name them. They're not just going to be given open-ended to people. So I think that might be it because then we have the Microsoft one. And let's do one quick refresh to make sure that they didn't file something. Nope. The last one is the hearing. Again, the latest in the Brian Koberger, February 28th. 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the hearing on the IgG info that he wants clarification on setting some dates for this trial to move forward. Will it move forward? You guys love to let me know what you think. Before we sign off, we're going to take a look at the Layetaw County Jail roster because we haven't done that in a while. And we kind of zipped through those. So, oh, Lord have mercy. Let's take a look. We have Mr. Kirk Aaron Adams. He's saying cheese for the camera. Coming in hot, coming in hot. Just like the fajita. We got April Alice Byer. Oh, sorry, he's in there for assault too. Look at his crazy ass eyes. April Alice Byer. She had warrants and Battery on an officer obstructing an officer. I think I might have seen her on a body cam. Um, Samuel Ray Byer. Probation violation, probation violation, drugs. <gasps> 
Nathaniel Jefferson Hale Cook. Burglary, principal to a crime, an out-of-county bench warrant. This guy, Thomas Allen Sinner, Graham Sinner, drugs, paraphernalia, obstructing, depriving owner of property, possessing a controlled substance. Dylan James Hooker, drugs. Brian Christopher Gober, murder and burglary. Kyler Matthew Ledet, drugs. Callie Ray Massey, drugs. Hollister shirt, David John Murray. Probation violation times two. There's 17 people in here. Loria Zedek, drugs. David Anthony Tyner, drugs. Wade Allen Smith, drugs. Oh, brother's got a broken hand. Justin Michael Sands, drugs. Or maybe it's burnt. Daniel John Paletta, grand theft and burglary with a $5,000 bond. <laughs> okay. Jonathan Lee Owens, eluding a police officer and possession of a stolen vehicle. Oh, Lord. Matthew Thomas Neely. Holy fuck. He's all beat up. Possession of a controlled substance, paraphernalia, possession of stolen property, criminal possession of FTC card, fictional bills, notes, checks, destroying evidence, possession of a controlled substance. He's screwed. No bond. And that concludes our video update of today, Monday, February 12th. I hope to see you guys while we're live streaming every day this week for the Adam Montgomery trial. Pop in and say hello. And I'll see you then. Everybody take care. Stay safe. Be sure to check out my other videos and playlists for more true crime content. And if that's not enough, you can join our Patreon. Don't have a tinfoil hat? It's okay. We'll make you one. It's that easy. See you guys in the next one.